Hi, my name is Bola Obileye and I'm your skinny cook. Today we'll be making soya in the oven. You love the soya in the pot video so much, you asked for this. And so what you ask for, you get. So today, like I said, we will be making soya and here are all the ingredients that you will need. First off, you need your beef, chicken, fish, whatever it is. I will show you how you need to cut those up later. You obviously need your soya pepper, which is what gives the flavor. Today I'll be using our natural soya seasoning from Skinny Cook. So that takes away all the stress about, you know, mixing up different ingredients. Uh, traditionally, uh, soya is served with onions and tomatoes, which makes up for the veggie bits. In the past, in the last video, we used avocado oil. Today we'll be using rapeseed oil. It's slightly cheaper than avocado oil like you guys wanted. And I didn't mention before, but red onions is the traditional, but you can use any kind of onions you like. I've got a bit of sea salt here. Because it's going in the oven, you might want to use some foil paper, but if you're a health freak like me, you might also want to stay away from foil with all the medical talk around foil paper, but we'll talk about that as well. So if you want to stay away from foil paper, you can use the baking paper that we used in the last video. This one is from a local high street store. I mentioned earlier that it's better to use the white ones rather than the brown ones. I think it has something to do with convection and how it handles heat. Obviously, you know that white, uh, I don't know what the science is, but white does better in terms of, uh, I don't know, something, we'll find out what. But if you use the brown ones, it actually burns the meats quicker. So I, in fact, why should I even forget? Darker colors, you know, just really hold that heat more while brighter colors kind of like just spread the heat out. So I think with the whiter ones, it takes longer to burn through. And that's the reason why my brain still works. Um, over here, I've also got some other bits and bobs, like some little bowls just to mix the spices in. You will need a chopping board. You can go for a bigger one. You need a knife. You can use an oven bowl like this one or you could use one of these if you don't want to do the washing up because it takes a while to cook and so you're going to have a bit of a stain so this might be an easier one to use but again it goes back to your choice whether you are really bothered with the uh, foil paper malarkey and discussions out there now you can google to find out more about them i personally still use them i believe i i want to do a lot more research around that to be able to make that judgment call as to whether or not to use those but yes my special guest today as i mentioned is adeola Bode Odeemi. She's the author of a book, Naturalization into the Kingdom of God. As you, some of you might know, I'm a Christian and, you know, doing this with her, she's also my friend and she's got a beautiful kitchen. There was just so much pause. Uh, my Christian walk wouldn't be complete without mentioning her. Uh, we used to be in fellowship together and I am so proud today to be sharing this fabulous meal with Dee. Thank you so much for having me, Dee. Uh, so guys, like I said, meet my friend Adeola Odeyemi, the author of Naturalization into the Kingdom of God. So Dee, as you know, suya is an amazing street food. Everyone loves it in Nigeria. It's an import from the northern part of Nigeria, but we all love it and we all have the first memory, well, sort of, at least we have, you know, how suya makes us feel. D, what's your first memory of suya? What does it bring to mind when people mention suya, suya. to you? So for me, it's funny because I actually schooled in the north. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did my <laughs> secondary school in the north. Uh, oh, part in of Joss. Oh, amazing. Joss. You had so, the real thing then. So I had the real thing. And we also have the thing called Kilish. I don't know if you know yes. what Kilish yes, which yes. is dry version yeah. of Suya. A bit so, like what the um, South Africans call Bilton? I yes, think. Yeah. yes. <laughs> Similar to that. Yeah, so that's what, it, yeah. So I remember... Um, going out to, outside of school <laughs> and getting suya on the street side yes you grew up in lagos as well so yeah. in comparison to how suya was popular in lagos is it the same in the north not did it really. have that same not really it's really. just I, I mean 
I mean, I, I think in Lagos, it's more, it's more popular. It's more uh, something of, um, they make it more interesting. Oh, wow. say, I'm sorry, Northerners. Uh, <laughs> but but in, in the North, or maybe because I was young, I, I was in a boarding school. Okay. So I only saw it when I did come out. Uh, but it wasn't that popular and it wasn't as nicely served. Okay. As it is in, in, in Lagos, obviously. Oh, I see. Yeah. I think it's definitely obvious then that maybe because it was almost like they were exporting it to the other parts of I Nigeria, so. they made it better. A bit like uh, how I feel when I go to China and have Chinese food. It. It's completely different from how it's plaited here to fit, you know, the Western way we do things. But in China, it's a lot more raw and they're like, no, this isn't, I want proper Chinese food and, you know, proper is very relative, I guess. Yeah. So, yes, let's get to it. We're going to make suya. Like I said, for me, my earlier memories of suya is Ikoi, you know, the best suya is uh, Obalende suya or Global Court suya. And it's just amazing. You know, everyone would queue up, just amazing. But guess what? You can bring back all that nostalgia, you can create it in your own kitchen, just as we'll be making it here in this fabulous kitchen. So let's get to it. We're gonna wash our hands because you need very, very clean hands. And you know we're all about health and wellness and we're going to get started. Right, so we've got our hands nice and washed and clean. Now that we have our hands washed and clean, one thing you have to bear in mind is that when you're handling the foods, make sure you're not handling the fresh foods with the raw foods because you will be cross-contaminating cross the food. Cross-contaminating the food. You don't want to do that. So the fresh foods need to be kept separate from the raw foods. But before we do that, we're going to just quickly show you how the onions and tomatoes are chopped up to give that traditional suya look. So in Lagos, suya would normally be served with onions that shaped or in the circular shape. I'll quickly show you how that is done because we're trying to go for that authentic look. I'll pass this on to Dee so that we can do it together and you can see how easy that is. Dee is getting in there, she knows what to do. So if we're going for the circular look, you, you need to be careful. So you literally just slice it down that way. That gives you that look. So you get your circular motions in there and that's how we serve. And the same goes for your tomatoes. You just nip that bit off. Give you that as well. Do you want all of it chopped or just? Um, just a bit, just to show. Once we've got that shown, uh, we can, you know, so this is how you chop up your onions. If you prefer to have the half moon look, which is actually a safer way to cut up your onions because that way you have more balance is to cut it in half like so. And then you balance that down and move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And then you just literally chop it off that way. And you get your half moon shape. So basically, that's what you need to do. So that's easy peasy, we'll come back to that later. I'll let you just, uh, yep. So because we're going to um, start prepping our, our mix, we're going to put all the, we'll put these away for now. And we're going to put our veggies in the fridge, just so it doesn't get involved in everything else that's going on here. So Dee put a bit of cling film on the veggies and those are in the fridge. So we're going to get right in there and start to make our soya. As you know, what really makes the soya is the spice. We've got our 100% natural soya seasoning, which is all the way from Nigeria. Because as you know, 
it's a top secret how the well the northerners don't share you know the recipe for making the suya pepper uh, but we know the recipe we know it we found it and it's right here so don't worry yourself about that so basically we are going to start to show you how to prep so i'm going to pass one of these to you as well d so what you need to do is open up your suya seasoning and put about roughly around just eyeball it because you can always add more as you go along so maybe like a quarter of a pack because a little goes a long way one of the things about suya to keep it nice and moist uh, you kind of like baste it with a little bit of oil just so you don't lose that juiciness so to my suya i will eyeball it as well and add a bit of oil till i have enough I'd say sort of like double the amount of the pepper. But like I said, we're using rapeseed oil. That's for you to mix it. And then you just give it a stir. So this is the kind of consistency. Some of you in Nigeria will recognize that. And you always used to wonder what the suya men we're mixing up this is the look and the consistency you get the spice is more or less ready to eat so it's not like it needs to go in the oven or anything so you might want to taste it d won't be tasting today but i will do the tasting it tastes amazing but some people like to have a little bit of salt added if you're one of those people that likes your food just slightly saltier I advise that you use just sea salt. All our spices are based on sea salt from Israel. Um, but if you're just the Saksa type person, try as much as possible to stay off and stay away from the store brands. Saksa is good. You can use it if you like. But I personally try to stay away from the store brands because a lot of them have uh, additives, anti-caking additives which end up in your body so basically what that does is it stops the salt from clogging up we don't have the, a problem with the salt clogging up it's just the water that makes it clog up so get used to that and use more sea salt so i'm just going to add a little bit to that like i said you don't need it but i'll just add it to it if you're like a salt lover i'm going to move these out of the way now that these are done like I said, you want to reduce cross-contamination as much as possible, especially when you start handling the meat. So you don't want the same hands that you use to touch up on the seasoning, to touch your surfaces or anything. And so to avoid that, we are going to be using what replaces the newspaper in nigeria we've got our own skinny cook uh, papers so they are oil proof papers so we're going to spread a bit of that on the table you can use whichever side yeah you want so we're going to spread that just so we have a work surface to lay our mix out today i'm using we've got some steak that's been cut up for us already and this is how they've been sliced up. So basically you have them and you layer them that way. So this is what we're doing now, Dee. So you layer a few of the slices down. Ideally, you would then have, uh, you know, the kitchen little hammers, the, the ones you use to kind of like braise food. To heat these up but these have already been braised so you might want to get one of those hammer looking things and that just basically helps it cook better so we'll lay out the meats slice them flat when you see your meats go dark don't panic it just means that it's been exposed a bit to um oxidation basically oxygen in the air so the, the meats haven't gone bad uh, but it just means that maybe uh it's been exposed to oxygen in your fridge or in some kind of like uh, 
So that's still good. We're going to lay a bit more out. So how do I ask my butcher to cut this? What shape do I... So basically, when you go to your butchers, you just tell them that uh, some of the butchers, uh, my butcher is Greek, so it's a Greek butcher. They have a particular meal that they prepare that is very similar to suya. So technically, they know what to do. So you just tell them that you want them to slice it flat for you and you want them to braise it. So they'll beat it down for you. So my butchers, Kiki's at Cockfosters, they're amazing. As for George, tell him I sent you. They're the most amazing people. Um, so like I said, they also have, they all already have something that's very similar to this. So they'll know what to do. If your butcher doesn't know what to do, um, you can do this yourself at home. You just slice it really flat. The flatter, the better. In fact, I think because they were rushing yesterday, they haven't made this as flat as I would have normally like. It should really, really be thin because that way it cooks quicker. So, let's put a bit more out. Try as much as possible not to uh, be mindful of what you're handling because don't forget your hands are now contaminated with raw food. Try as much as possible to protect your work surfaces or give it a good clean afterwards anyway. So, we've got that spread out. The next thing for us to do is to spread our seasoning over. I think I need more. <laughs> you grab, I think I might need more as well. So you just take a spoon and just drop it there and spread it. Remember now that the spoon you're using has now made contact with the raw meat. This means that you're not no longer allowed to taste that. You can't taste anything anymore because it's now touched the raw meat. You want to stay safe. You don't want to get a bellyache. Um, you never see the suya men touching up the foods. Uh, this is the reason why even back home, they're very aware that, you know, you have to stay safe. So you never, ever taste after it's touched that. So you spread... So I've quickly run out. This is a better way. It's better for you to run out because if you use too much, you can't save it because you've touched up on the raw. I'll pass you the oil. So I'm going to quickly give my hands a wash before I handle the bottle of oil. Yes, I'll just make two first. So I'm going to quickly wash my hands before I handle the seasoning and the oil bottle again because I don't want to pass any germs over there. So I washed my hands and then I can handle the oil bottle. Just put that in the bin. So I'm going to make enough for uh, DNI. So remember, you put about a quarter. You'd be surprised how far these little things go. They they can actually make quite a few. When I make a big lot for a party, I only use one. So I'm going to mix a little because you only got. I need more. <laughs> you need more. I haven't okay. done this too. Mix some more. Do that. I think we've both got enough. Add some oil to it, which is sort of like double the amount of the pepper you've put in. I think if you need more, I'll pass some more to you. I'm gonna move these away quickly. Like I said, remember to always keep your hands, be mindful of where your hands go once you start handling the meat. Health is wealth. And the oils, like I said, helps you lock in the flavor because as you start to cook, the juices start to come out, but you want to really lock in the flavor. I think I've put too much oil in these ones 
if that happens to you, don't panic. You just literally have to, you can spread the um, extra seasoning over the meat before or after cooking. So there's always room. This is the amazing thing about soya. No matter how you cook it, you always have room to make it taste better because when it comes out of the oven, you can always add the soya pepper and what, before it goes in, you can add the soya pepper. You only need to actually cover one side because we're going to be cooking them all together. The juices will actually flow down inside and we'll be turning it over. So the next step now that we've got it all covered up, you can't save any of these when you finish, so you might as well use it all up. So make sure that you've got everything covered. So can I have that? Okay. <laughs> okay, just a little bit left. Okay, yes, she passed me those. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're going to move these out of the way and wash them as quickly as possible. If you were in a professional kitchen, you would be washing your raw dishes, things that you've put um, raw foods in, in a separate place from um, where you actually make fresh foods. But as we're in a home kitchen and you are probably at home as well, try to make it a habit to make sure that when you wash raw foods, you wash them separate from things like your cups and uh, because raw foods come with their own kind of special germs that don't always die when you use um, washing up liquid. So be very mindful to make sure you're cleaning properly and that if as much as possible, um, use a separate sponge or make sure that you wash the sponge properly to get rid of all the germs that come with raw foods. So we're gonna do that now because you have to learn to clean as you go. Like I mentioned in the last video with how to make suya in a pot, we use baking paper. I'm going to still stick with that, but Dee will be using foil paper just so that you see that you, you've got that flexibility to actually cook however you like. Like I said, I know there's some people that don't really like foil paper, but you get the same result whether you use foil paper or you use baking paper. So basically what you need to do is to pull out your baking paper to the size of your pan or your baking pan, and then you double it just so you have, because what I want to do is for you to have enough to go in the oven and then to cover it up. So, so this is basically the size of my pan and I'm gonna double that. So I'm gonna nip it here because I know I have double that. So basically you put double the size. I'm going to be using this. That's what you need. Well, that works. <laughs> yes, so that's all you need to do. Okay. If you haven't got uh, an oven, a uh, bowl, or whatever, like I said, you can put it in one of these disposable things. Um, it would still cook in there. You might get a bit burnt bits, but I don't really like foods getting burnt because, as you know, it's toxic to the body. The body just does not know what to do with burnt foods. I don't know why we Africans like burnt food, but try as much as possible to take off the label off your body by not burning your foods. The bottom of the pot belongs to the bin, not in your body. So now that we've layered that out, so all we're going to do now is, you might need to cut it off. Or you yeah, you can wait till we, we okay. lay it so you know exactly where to cut. Yeah. Okay. So basically just take your meats and layer them flat. And then you just layer them one over the other. Don't worry about the fact that the back isn't done. We're going to turn it over later. So this is what we're just doing. We're just placing these meats. Very 
your first time making suya. Yes, you're gonna love it. You're gonna get hooked. Cause at home, you should see how my children's face lights up. Oh, you're making suya! Like, don't you guys ever get fed up? It's one of those things that um, I really consider I would miss so much if I ever became vegan. Becoming vegan is a plan I have when I grow up. <laughs> so uh, until then, I will be a part-time vegan like Alex, <laughs> our camera superhero. So once you've got that place in the bowl, you then cover it up. Because what would happen is that all the juices will start to come out into the pan and you want to lock all the juices in because this is what keeps the flavor in. So when you put it in the oven, it would first cook for a bit and you see all the juices, don't panic. And afterwards you go back in and open it up and let some of the juice evaporate. But first of all, you want the juices to cook in the meat. So we'll cover it nicely. Oh, well done. So it's like a little parcel. Okay, so we're gonna wash our hands. I'm a little bit fanatical about this because if you don't, you're going to handle the oven with the same raw hands. And this is how you pass on germs in the house. So just make it a habit to wash your hands as much as possible. We haven't handled um, the pans uh, before we started to handle the meat. So it might still be okay for you to hold this, but when you go and pull on the handle, then you'll be taking your raw hands there. So please wash your hands. But I want to, uh, Pick away all the grease-proof paper as well. So as much as possible, you pull it away from your work surface. Because I usually work in a professional kitchen, I have like a professional disinfectant that I would use, but because you're going to be making this at home, make it a habit to wash over, use your um, washing up liquid to clean the areas that even areas that you think did not touch the the raw foods, it just keeps everything nice and healthy. And these go straight in the bin. Oh, D is super prepared, look at that. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna just put this in the bin. Before I handle the handles, I'm gonna wash my hands. I'll put it back here, because it gets a split. Okay. So we're going to put our parcels in the oven. One covered in baking paper and the other in foil paper. We'll come back to that later. We're gonna give the kitchen a bit of a wipe to make sure our work surfaces are back to healthy standards. And then Dee and I are going to sit down and talk about naturalization into the kingdom of God, the amazing book she wrote. I can't wait. So we're gonna just quickly do some cleaning. I need a cup of tea. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think you should do the tea. Right, so while we've got the suya in the oven, I'm just going to catch up with Dee. I mentioned earlier that she's the author of this amazing book, Naturalization Into the Kingdom of God. Dee is also a minister for those of you that are not Christians, that's similar to being a pastor. So I've got a few questions for my pastor Dee. <laughs> I'm not a pastor. <laughs> I, I don't know, the title pastor, just call me D. <laughs> okay, so I've got a few questions for D today. Yeah. So I'm going to start off. You know when you meet someone that is a doctor, you always have a question for them like, oh, <laughs> you're a doctor? Check out this. I'm going to do the same to her today. So while yeah. I have you here, D, there's an issue that um, I kind of like suffer with, I guess, uh, for a lack of a better word, which is for me as a Christian, um, I found my purpose. I know what my purpose is, but I always find it difficult to charge people money around my purpose. And I know that this is a, a, an issue with a lot of Christians uh, because we know our calling. We think that we should give it all away free. What's your take on that day and how 
would you advise one deals with that? Because at the end of the day, we need to live a life. Even as a Christian, we need to pay our bills. That's right. And yeah, so what's your take on that? Yeah, so I, I did struggle with that for a while. Because um, as a, someone who goes around to minister uh, mm -hmm. the gospel uh, and a business owner, yeah. um, I mean, my husband and I we run several businesses together. And uh, the ones that I struggled with really were the ones that I was just my my business uh, which was the hamper the hamper business and then jury um and for a long time i was having a conversation with a friend of mine she was like maybe you should give up uh the businesses and just concentrate on uh ministry and i'm like i don't want to be making money from ministry and i need to have an income uh so i said you know what i got to pray about it and when i prayed about it uh what i received was that is because i have separated my my uh core from the business wow so i thought okay what does that mean say so that because your purpose and your call yes i'm called to a people i'm called to serve i'm called to actually inject and introduce the kingdom of god into every aspect of my life so how then can i do that with my businesses so um i'll take for example i have a a, a company called the one that runs my book it's called ministry of uh, reconciliation so it is under that uh, company that I run, I write my books, I do my ministry and all mm. of those things. And the money that is raised from there, the profits is then re reintroduced into. back into okay. the uh, into, um, interest. So it's a CIC company. So what that means is that for me, I've chosen to take from my profit to introduce into mental health wow. and for uh, autism. So I'm putting back into the kingdom to build... So I'm in a group of people, I'll show you that in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to build a clinic where people of faith who have mental health issues can come to. Why is that? Because we realize that NHS is not able to really cater for not only uh, people of uh, color, mm -hmm. but people of faith. Because when you say that you're saying things sometimes, yeah. I shouldn't get into that yet. <laughs> going back to your... Uh, going back because I get carried away when I when I something I'm passionate about. So going back to charging. So for me, I then realized that okay, so I can use money from my businesses yeah. to fund things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So that removed that from me. And another one that we struggle with is the things that you've been doing free for people for a long time. I know, right? <laughs> so for me, every day of my life, I have people calling me for advice, for prayers, for um for counsel every time every day of my life and there was a time that like five hours five to six hours of my day wow people were calling me and i didn't mind uh because i was counseling people for many years but then i realized that you know what um i have been doing this thing as i've been coaching people without actually calling it coaching mm. so i then went on to do uh, training i became a certified uh, coach, coach. <laughs> which then means you know what when i say that i'm charging for this i'm not ripping you off i've been I'm trained not doing i've yeah. been trained and again the purpose of the money i'm not making money to become just uh whatever the purpose is to also uh and, and the truth is yeah. when you take that step to go and train yourself you're equipping yourself to do better for people and it costs you a lot of it money does. so if i look at myself for example i've spent almost close to ten thousand pounds just doing courses just to renew myself so why do i still struggle if i was okay to pay other people yes uh to train myself to this level where i have enough knowledge why am i still struggling to charge other people why do i still feel that i should be giving it away free we just have to be kinder to ourselves and Indeed. remember tie it back to the kingdom Yes. Because the Bible says, you know, it says that uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And it mentioned some things in the preceding verses. It said those things, which is where to live, what to wear, what to eat, those things will be added onto you. So we're not to chase those things because they come, they chase after those who chase after the kingdom of God. So mm -hmm. once you know that, you know, my purpose is to advance God's kingdom in whatever I do, 
then I know that those things will follow me anyway. You might find that some of those people that you've been giving those things free for, like you've been coaching them free. Yeah. Uh, and then when you now say that, oh, I am now a certified, I, you know, I, I charge, you might not see them. But God anymore. Always bring, yeah, you might not you see might them bring new people yeah, your way. always bring new people your way. Okay, you know? this so is getting it. really interesting. But before we burn our soya, we're going to just give it a quick check and we'll come back to chatting. So let's do that. So I'm going to quickly just check what is happening here. So this is what I meant when I said that all the juices get collected in there. Can you see how juicy it looks? So these juices are from the mix. Wow, that looks nice. But don't panic, we've covered it up, it's cooked the meat, how do I know? I'll show you because the juices only come out after you've cooked the meat. I normally use a temperature gauge to see how hot this is. Um, if you've got a temperature gauge at home, it should be roughly around 74 degrees for you to know that it's cooked onto the inside. Um, but you can give it a quick turn, the juices are there. And then you can start picking these to turn it around just to give the meat the opportunity to uh, the juices to get round. So I'm gonna do that. Whoops, I'm quite oh, impressed. Really cooked already. Yeah. So the next stage now is for us to is for the meat to absorb the juices. So when it goes back in the oven now. We won't cover the, 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 the meats anymore. So I'm trying to get to the ones at the bottom. So just trying to pull that. Do the other one. I'm just gonna hold it. I think it might even be overcooked already because you can see that the meats are breaking off. So it doesn't really matter if they don't need to be laid down, you know, in a very fancy way while in the oven. So don't worry about how it looks. So now that we're gonna leave it open, open, you can either just rip off the extra bits. So dear, I'm gonna let you do. Yes, please. So you can see this is what I meant when I said it doesn't really matter whether you use foil paper or whether you use the baking paper. It comes out the same. The juice is in there already. Uh, I'm gonna turn one over and I'm gonna let D do the rest just so. You see at home how easy. Uh, I think the only thing I've noticed here, and it might be to do with the positioning in the oven. D's doesn't look as if it's cooked properly yet. I can still see the fresh bits from the meats here. Okay, this was at the bottom of the oven. This was at the bottom of the oven. So uh, you can have this as a family meal, even. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So we usually have it like on Friday nights. we like, or when we have friends over, we have suya nights. Okay. It's the oh, try not to handle it. It's gonna to be too hot. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, so it's gonna go back. Remember, the next time, at once the juices come out, you don't need to cover it anymore. So we keep cooking in the oven. We're gonna clean up this area and then we. Could you help me with the oven? Please? Indeed. Oh, so, yeah, so I've swapped. So now that we've checked on the suya, time to catch up on a bit of gist. So there's this thing that's you know popular on Instagram that has been really, really ticking me off. And it's all about living your best life. I think people get it so wrong. I think people hide under all sorts of guises like you know, eating unhealthy, doing stupid things that they shouldn't, just because you know, YOLO, one life. What's your take on living your best life? How can we actually really live our best life? 
I suppose uh, it really, really depends on what the person means when they're saying living their best life. I think uh, uh, coming from the perspective that you're coming from, um, when somebody is being told that, you know, you need to watch what you're eating mm -hmm. um, for your heart's sake and all yeah. of that. And then they're now digging into some uh, big, big burgers, burgers <laughs> and saying, I'm, I'm going to live my best life. Mm. Uh, that's not really living the best life. Uh, but when someone takes out time to actually look after themselves, mm -hmm. either emotionally, yeah. uh, mentally, um, just, you know, taking time out to, to really look out for us, because that's what we don't do, because in this country or everywhere in the world, actually, when people get busy and just doing stuff. Uh, I like when I see somebody on a beach somewhere saying, I'm living my best life. Or like what I heard recently of someone saying, someone behind the camera saying, you know what, <laughs> I've decided to actually take time out to have gratitude time, you know, to be intentional about it, like really thinking of, I, I you know, I'm having a bad day, I'm having, you know, a downtime, but I'm remembering to be grateful for the things that I have and taking time out to actually have a gratitude time is living mm. your best life. Um, taking time out to actually making sure that, you know, I'm going to be uh, intentional about being forgiven and even being forgiven, you know, to forgive yourself as well, you know, is living mm. your best life or forgiving other people. You know, I, I mentioned in the book about things that actually can limit us from living our best life, if you like, mm. and, and things like that, you know, like not taking time out to deal with issues that were you know that we might be um struggling with yeah i think I, I think the problem i have around it is the fact that people hide a lot of things so rather than addressing certain issues you cover it up because you don't want to deal with it mm. and then you find the next trending topic to hide it another one that really really <laughs> gets me ticked off and i think it's I don't know whether it ticks me off or whether it also permits us not to deal with ourselves. Issues, yeah. So we look at things and we say that this year, if you're not bringing positivity into my life, if this is that, I'm going to block you, I'm going to do this. I'm, and, and this new phrase, live, living in your feelings, or how do you say it? <laughs> how do you say it? In your Alex, being in your feelings. Yeah, Alex is behind the camera yep, and he's laughing. Feelings. All up in your feelings. All up in your feelings. I don't get it. I mean, sometimes I think we need to take a look at ourselves. If everybody is toxic in your life, have you checked maybe you might be the toxic one? Mm -hmm. And I mean this in the best possible way because if you're losing friends and you're blocking everyone, how about taking some time to say, what value am I bringing to the table as well? Mm -hmm. We're all up saying, I'm blocking everybody. You're not bringing value. We really need to change our take, take, take mindset and say, this year, I'm bringing the take to the table all of me. Mm -hmm. And not everybody will accept all of you. Yeah. So how do you know who to block in that stage? <laughs> so when you keep saying blocking, blocking, it's... <laughs> It has the ring like it's, you're talking about social media. Yes, definitely okay. social media. Okay, so this is where a lot of people really have it twisted, have it mm. confused. Yeah. That the people on social media are not really your friends. Mm. Really and truly. Only very few friends will follow mm. you. Know, the people that follow you on there. But when people now get, get sucked into the idea that, you know, I'm living my best life, but you're really talking to the people on the other side of social media, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not... It's not really being realistic. That means you might be spending too much time on there if uh, you know your your um, gauge to the toxic relationship that you want to cut off is being blocking people off social media. Then that means that you're probably living too much on social media. But we're talking about in real life where you know you want to cut some toxic people out of your life, which we really should do that because. Um, you know, there's just some people that, you know, drag other people down. Mm -hmm. And every time you see them, you leave your, you leave them depleted. Mm -hmm. That they haven't added anything to you. Yeah. So, you know, we have to watch out for people like that. So it's all, that's on one side. But again, as you said, you know, sometimes we have to look at ourselves as well. That what have I really uh, brought to the relationships around me? I mean, what, what value am I adding to other people? Yeah. And, and some people, I have this relation, um, this conversation with my daughter all the time now. You know what? It is important. It's not about looking for friends. 
is about being friendly to people and being, uh, you know, that friend that is there. And you have to be your authentic self in friendship. And when I'm, when I'm talking about authentic friendship, um, I'd rather have people in my life that will tell me the truth in love than the people who will just, you know, um, agree with everything that I say. <laughs> or, yes, people. Do you understand? <laughs> or, or really uh, brush yeah. over my bad behavior uh, and just allow me to be. So that is important to, I'd rather have one, two good, solid friendship than mm. to have myself surrounded with 10 uh, uh, fake it's friends. Yeah, yeah. I think one oh, of the yes, things, yes, yeah. yeah, one of the things you said there is, you know, correcting in love. And I think that's yeah. one thing that we all have to learn to do because many times we all see other people's uh, mistakes or whatever they're doing yeah. wrong. We don't look at ourselves in that way. But if we were able to put love first so that that person understands that, okay, girl, I love you, but... but then it's easier to accept than just going like, you did this, you did that. So yeah. yeah, definitely taking that on board. So I think it's been a fun chit chat, but before I let you go, I want to ask one question. If there was one thing you could change in the world, what would it be? Wow. If there was one thing I could change in the world, what would it be? That's a big one. It is because I don't even know the answer, so don't ask me. <laughs> Well, if there was one thing I could change in the world, it would be really to let people know about their, to have a strong identity, um, realize, I mean, to have a, a, how do I put this? To actually know their identity, you know, to know who you are, uh, know who you are in, in the totality, not just about who I am as a daughter or as a sister or all of that. Really, who am I? Where have I come from? And, you know, what, what am I put on this earth to, to give out, to be? Because I find that a lot of us don't actually know who we are. And we allow people to tell us who we are. You know, for so long, you know, people are, you know, put you in a box and you believe that for so long. And then until you get to a certain age, sometimes if you're lucky, then you realize that actually all of those things are not who I am. And then you take up the label. Oh, so if I had... Uh, my way of doing this is to really let young girls and, and, and boys to know from very young age to let them know a sense of identity of who they are and being, you know, persuaded that, you know what, it's not what you think about me that matters. It's, you know, once I know who I am, you know, I don't get defined by your own, uh, uh, you know, through your own lenses of who you think I, I ought to be. I love that. And that has automatically taken me on to another question, even though that was supposed to be the last question. And there's this popular thing that's going around now where everybody's looking back at their lives and thinking, if I had known that I would be this blessed or where I am today, I would have worried less. So in a few words, just say, what would you, you would have said to your younger self? Oh, wow. Ah, that's another, you know, <laughs> interesting one. Uh, it's, it's hard to put that into short whatever, but my younger self, I, I always um, stood out um, very oddly. I stood out very oddly because I, I wasn't interested in the conversation that the most girls had. I wasn't interested about talking about other people. Um, I, I wasn't interested about... So if, if you and I are having a conversation and you're telling me about the person behind mm. the camera and they're not here, I'm the sort of person that when they come... I would say, is it true that you said, you know, you did so and so? I didn't know, um, I, you know, I didn't know that, you know, I was just not so clued on with the way that people were so manipulative. So when I saw that, I withdrew, right? right? So for me, I, I, I've been very sheltered and I thought that was bad, but is understanding the way that people are, and really learning to protect myself, but still be myself. I think that if I had any way of um, telling my young, my young self now, I would say, you know what? You're doing good, girl. You're doing good. Just keep it up. Fantastic. Yeah. So, wow, you heard it. We all end up where we end up when we give God the glory. And on that note, I am going to get us to finish off the soya. And yes. yes. Let's do some eating. Thank you for that chat, Thank Dee. Thank you so much. I like to call her Pastor Dee. Don't forget <laughs> about her book. Now let's get back to the suya. Thank you. 
So basically, we're trying to speed up the work. I'll tell you the quick difference. When you make suya in a pot and you have the, what we call it, the, I'm just gonna get rid of that as well. When you make suya in a pot and you use the baking paper, the flame obviously speeds up um, the absorption of mm. the juices and obviously some of it evaporates off. In the oven, because it's sort of like a closed unit, it takes a while. The oven more like cooks things. So we've left the other pan in there. And just to speed up things, so if you had a guest, because the meat itself is actually cooked, mm -hmm. but you just want to get that slightly uh, not so like boiled look. You want it to have that soya barbecued look. So we put it in the oven just to uh, dry it up a little bit, but not too much. And also because it's not going to be absorbing all the flavor, which is now in here, you might want to just, you know, flavor the pan again with a bit of soya um, spice. So you layer it there because soya is all about the flavor. I mean, you can boil meat, you can do whatever, but if you don't taste it, if you don't taste that flavor, so you have to um, pour over the... No, so, so you, you can put, put it in the pan. In the pan. You okay. can put a bit over it as well. And you can do this as much as possible when the food is ready, okay. before it's ready. You really, really want it to just really absorb that flavor okay. because that's what makes it suya. You can fry meat, you can season meat. If it hasn't got that suya pepper taste, it's not suya. Mm. So be generous. And just know that... Yeah. You don't have to use this much, but I'm just doing it this. It's really so. nice. Yeah. If you were waiting for it to like really absorb it, especially in a pot, you wouldn't even need to do the grill, um, um, that one. In fact, it doesn't even need to go in the grill. You can put it back in the oven because now it's drier. Okay. So it's going to be quicker to absorb and our soya will soon be ready. So now you can tell that it's really cooked. Um, like I said, if you had a temperature gauge, you can use that as well. Just gonna put that. Nice. Smells mm. lovely. Yeah, it's just that sweet smell and the, the spices in there. Like I said, this is 100% authentic. So yeah, spice and we're going to stick it back in the oven obviously because the, the top is going to go brown first and then we'll go back and, and turn it over so this is the other pan that has uh that has the baking paper it looks very similar so uh we're going to turn that over whoops it's okay so we can drain this as well you can oh. drain this or, or you can just it. wait for okay. it to cook so let's see how that would cook if, if we, we leave, leave it. it out okay so let's, let's leave it out. it's going yeah. to be a while though uh, but we'll leave it out so uh, but you know what i'll take a bit off okay do you want another tray or something yeah i think i'll get another tray i've got it you got them. Awesome. Yeah, so we're just gonna speed up some of the work. So we'll leave some in so there. Where do we get this from again? Just so everything on your website. Okay, so this you can get from skinnycook.co.uk. Um, we've got a skinny cook shop. You click on the shop and you go to the seasoning section, you find our natural 100% uh, African gold dust, as I love to call it. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna give it away. I really like the coconut. Um, oh, the coconut flour food. Yeah, I love it as well. It's like a lifesaver in our house. Because so my husband is uh, a typical Ibadan guy. He loves his, uh, what Nigerians call swallow, <laughs> which is like fufu. And he loves our soup. So that is a lifesaver. So we're going to drain that out just to speed things up a little bit. If you've got a party or you've got like people coming over uh, and you can't wait for it to. Uh, suck up all the juice 
You can do this. Oops, forgot to uh, sprinkle. Sprinkle a bit more. So like I said, making suya is all about the spice. So yeah, be generous. They're very, very affordable. It's just $3.99 a pack and a pack goes a long way. I think so I'll what would you eat that. this with if you are? So generally, uh, back in Nigeria, so yeah, it's served with onions and tomatoes. Some people have it with Gary. Uh, here, um, I just tend to have it with the veg. And then sometimes I have it with Greek yogurt, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I have Greek yogurt, which I mix in. I sweeten with erythritol. I add in a bit of strawberries. I just make it fun. It's almost like having to get ice cream, which you would not normally do. Uh, but try it. It's amazing. Wow. So you sweeten the uh, Greek yogurt uh, or just have it with something cool. You can have it with your jollof rice. You can have it. You can really have it with anything. But back in Nigeria, it was always like, you know, that special treats that you know, it was a treat all by itself. You didn't even really need to have it with anything. It was just a soya and a cool drink and it just hits the spot. Mm -hmm. So we were going to leave some in the tray, but um, yeah, I think we're just going to speak things up a little bit. So Dee can have her home kitchen back. Before lunchtime. <laughs> before lunchtime, before everyone gets back. It can be out of her house. So once you put it in the grill, I think I'm putting it back in the oven for now. But if you were to put it in the grill, make sure you're keeping an eye on it. A grill gives direct heat. Um, so it's like really having that fire over it. So you have to keep an eye to make sure that it doesn't burn out and uh, yeah, it doesn't you know, dry up because you really want to keep it nice, juicy and mm. succulent. So we've taken oh, wow. the suya out of the oven. That looks and good. that's what it looks like. Wow. So now we're going to go on to the next stage, which is to chop it up. Oh, wow. uh, there's an easy way of doing this, and then there is a just normal way of doing it. So you can put it on the tray. The first time you do it, you probably want to do it and be quite funky with it. Uh, but wow. I've done it a few times. So sometimes I try to cut the chase yeah, yeah. Okay. by layering. Okay. So you I'll layer. I'll start with one because I haven't yeah. done this before. So you can. Oh, wow. This is good. This is the slight issue with when you go into the of uh, the grill or you drain the water. Sometimes it, it could feel a little bit dry, but I think this is sort of like uh, it's kind Perfect. of like needs to uh, yeah get away with it here. Wow, this is good. And you just cut it down. Unbelievable. And then. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is cut them into squares as much as possible. They don't need to be like same size or anything like that. We're going for the streets rough and ready look. I'm really impressed. <laughs> And if you overmake the suya, well done. If you overmake it, you can always freeze it on the day and just, you know, make sure you put it in like uh, in a very sealed container. Um, blast chill it if you can. If not, freeze it and then warm it in a microwave. You just sprinkle a little bit of water over it. If you've got a lot of guests over, you. This is the bit I hate. I need to find some kind of like knife cutter or some sort. Because if you make it for a whole lot of people, it's a yeah, whole lot of cutting to do. So well done, Dee. You did really well. Yeah, I'm, I'm super Our proud. Our is ready. 
this is what it looks like but in Nigeria you know that soya gets served in newspaper but not hygienic we've got our papers here which you can order well free you, you get it free when you buy your soya pepper so we're going to try to do what the Malams do in Nigeria and there is no perfect way of doing this so let's see how um, D and I get on <laughs> D let's see what you do I'll do mine okay. and we'll see who does the best work okay. so you put a bit and then like that a bit, yep. bit make sure you go a bit of the there the tomatoes and then in Nigeria after they sprinkle, do that for you yeah. they sprinkle a bit of pepper and then the CMI will ask you, one more onion, can, one can more tomatoes? One? You've got that over there, it's open. So, and when you say no, I'm fine, they're like, okay, okay. Okay. They're like, no. open, close? Close. Close. <laughs> okay. Uh, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do it that way. And that way. So I'll put this away so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to this to the side. Ah, I know what to do. So when it's closed, that way, that way. Okay, it doesn't look like proper CR, <laughs> but we'll get there somehow. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> and they make it seem so. I know, they make it seem so easy. They just go. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, it doesn't look pretty, so I'm going to try to make it look pretty. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> So this is my take on Nigerian soya. Well, and this is my take on soya. If you can't be bothered with wrapping, just eat it out of a plate. Thank you so much for watching. This is soya made in an oven. Thank you once again, Dee. Thank you so much. My wonderful that. guest who's allowed us to use a beautiful kitchen. So yes, thank you for watching, guys. Go ahead and make it. Don't forget to order your soya pepper seasoning. See you later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>